What's up, YouTube's PCSC in here. I've got a Zippo video for you guys today, and what I'm going to be talking about in this video is I'm basically going to be comparing the high polished chrome finish to the high polished brass finish of um, you know of Zippos, and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, if you know, than those who might have already done a video like this. Uh, at least I don't think anyone's done this before. In that I'm going to be not only comparing um, two brand new Zippos to each other, a brand new high polished brass and a brand new high polished chrome. Um, well, I shouldn't say they're brand new, I should just say they're new, because, you know, they're not exactly brand new. They do actually have wear marks on them. But, anyways, it'll give you the, you know, basically general idea uh, of that. But not only going to do that, I'm also going to be comparing the two finishes after each of them have been used for a pretty significant amount of time. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, what I have right here, uh, I've got uh, up here at the top, I've got my two brand new Zippo examples. And like I said, these aren't really brand new, especially this one. This one actually did get, uh, someone actually gave it to me after they owned it for about a year. It wasn't really ever used though, but, you know, it does have a few marks on it. But, and I also have my high polished brass, which is, you know, brand new per se. And from this angle, they both look pretty much identical, which is kind of annoying. And then down here, I've got my used examples. But we're going to go ahead and crack into these a little bit later on in this video. So let's go ahead and set these off to the side for now. And I'm going to compare these two. Alright, so this right here is the high polished chrome, uh, when it's basically brand new. And, uh, like I said, I did actually ha get this one um, from somebody about a year after they had purchased it. So as you can see, it does have a few scratches right there, but, you know, as you can see, what I mainly want for you, what I really want for you guys to pay attention to here as I get it cleaned up as good as I can, uh, is just sort of look at, you know, the consistency of the finish, look at how high polish it is, basically. Um, you'll notice that, I mean, it is actually very nicely done. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no, like, marks or anything, again, aside from the scratches. Um... There aren't really any marks, though, from it. it it's pretty much, it's pretty consistent. Um, I would say it's actually comparable to the finish of, uh, I don't know if I'd say it's like as high polish as a hard drive platter, if you know what that looks like. Uh, but I would say it's, it, whoops, it's, it's probably pretty comparable. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, that might be actually a bit extreme, because those things have to be perfect in order to function properly. Like, if there's even one dust dust, dust particle on a hard drive platter, then the hard drive will die completely. Um, because, yeah. Anyway, as I stutter over my words, uh, I think something else you could also compare it to is maybe Apple's iPod line, you know, ones with the, or the iPod Classic now with the uh, high polish back it has. Anyways, I feel like I'm rambling now. As you can see, it's just very shiny. So, yeah. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the high polish brass. This one is also pretty shiny, but what you'll notice immediately, might need to refocus what here. you'll notice immediately uh, is that it's got these lines on it. Alright, and those, I really do don't know why those are there. I think, honestly, maybe the brass just, you know, when it's going over the buffing wheel, it just shows, you know, like the marks, you know, it just shows the marks from the buffing wheel a little bit better than the chrome does or something. I don't really know, but that is something that I noticed immediately. So if you get a high polished chrome or high polished brass Zippo brand new, um, now you know to expect that. Because when I saw that for the first time, you know, I was saying, oh, I, I apparently got a brushed brass instead of what I ordered, which is the high polish brass. But it actually is, as you can quite clearly tell, because you can still see, you can still see the, um, cam the camera right there in the reflection. It is indeed a very high polish brass. So, yeah. It's, the, uh, the lines are not, if I wipe it off real quickly here, the lines are not really all that perceptible right here at the tops and where there are curved edges, although they are still there and are still somewhat perceptible, but not really as easily. 
especially at the dome top. The dome top, they're pretty much like non-existent, so, but yeah. Like I said, uh, right here though, you'll see that. You'll also notice that this one is quite a bit more scratched up um, than this one is. Brass just seems to get scratched easier. It just, it's just the way it is. Um, so yeah. Okay, yeah. so now that you know what each of these zippos look like brand new, uh, let's go ahead and move these off to the side, and we're going to go ahead and get into the other two right here. Boom. All right, so these two zippos here are both very well used. Both of these are my ED were my main EDC zippos for quite a long, long time, and this one is my current main EDC. I will say that e I think I've actually have used this one a lot more than this one, you know, even though I have been using this one for a really long time. I just do think that I've been using this one for much longer, so actually I think that is the case. I think I've only been using this one for like a couple months, while this one I've used for practically like half a year at least, so anyways, it'll, it'll still give you a dramatic, there's still actually a dramatic difference, uh, though that will pretty clearly show um, what you can expect from both of them if you use if you plan on using them both as users. So, anyways, this here is the high polished chrome. Okay, so there's the high polished chrome after being used for a while, and here we have the high polished brass after being used for a while. So let's go ahead and take a look at the high polished chrome. So as you can see from the high polished chrome, it's pretty much what you would probably expect. Um, you know, it's pretty much, you probably expected this to be the, uh, overall turnout of the, like, the, you know, what it would look like after a, bu a bunch of use. Um, if you basically take, like, an, if, do I even, is my iPod Touch even in here? No, it isn't, but, yeah, if you basically picture, like, you know, an old iPod that was really, never really had a case all around it to protect it, you know, from scratches and such, you know, it's basically going to look like that. Um... So yeah, that's that. Uh, also take a look at this insert here. Alright, as you can see the insert is a little bit scratched up. You are going to get those scratch, you know, scratch marks right there um, from the lid rubbing up against the uh, chimney there. So you will see that from pretty much any Zippo. That's actually, uh, that's pretty much like inevitable if you're going to use a Zippo. If you're going to use a Zippo, no matter how careful you are when you close it, because, I mean, let's face it, sometimes you're just going to do that, you know what I mean? You know, you're not always going to be like, okay, and close. I mean, even in doing that right there, it's still rubbed up against it, but that's actually because I've got a really, really loose lid. This lid got really loose on me, so, yeah, this this actually is almost too loose, but, yeah, I shall even show you just for poops and giggles how loose it is. Yeah, you can see it, it goes way over there, and it, that, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> it, it's a little bit too loose, but whatever, it still works. So anyways, uh, that's that. You'll also notice we got a few random little scuffs here and there. Alright, you, you know, just a few little blotches here and there. As you can see, there's a nice good scratch right there. Um, another good little boo-boo right there, a little ding. And on the sides here, yeah, I'm not... You know, yeah, um, yeah, so there you go. Now we're going to take a look at the high polished brass after it's been used, all right? And here this one is. Again, this is my current user. The thing you're going to notice is that it just looks old. That's pretty much what it'll, it just, it just sort of looks old. Um, in fact... I have actually received co a comp you know, compliments from people saying that, "Wow, that's a really nice old Zippo you got there." Well, you, do you know? Do you happen to know when it was made, or something like that? And uh, I tell them that it's made in April of this year. Whoop, upside down. <laughs> April of this year. So, yeah, it, it it definitely gets a very a aged look to it as you continue to use it, as you can clearly tell. Which is actually a very nice touch. As you can see, it is still reflective. Um, you can barely... I mean, actually, I, don't, I think that's a little extreme. You can, at least I can, through the viewfinder, make out the, uh, the, the base, you know, the image of a camera in there. I can see the lens, 
you know, I can actually, yeah, I mean, you can, you can see the reflection of the camera in there. You can make out the lens, you can make out sort of the individual rings there. You might be able to make out the, the, um, this bit right here, the grip. Um, so yeah. Something else that's interesting to note is that brass turns blue when it heats up. So, I don't know if this is like something you'd have to really be concerned with with an uh, with a re with a regular Zippo or a regular uh, brass Zippo. Like I said, this is actually an armor Zippo. Um, the other one that I showed you for the brand new example was actually a regular Zippo. I don't know if if you use a regular Zippo if it you know if you let the chimney get really hot like that when you close the lid if it'll actually turn the regular Zippo's casing blue. I kind of doubt it. But it's just something to note. Um, I would actually recommend maybe going for a brass armor. I actually really am happy that I went for the brass armor. This lid is also starting to get a little loose too, but it's not nearly as loose as this one. But, you know, that get, is again inevitable with these armors. I also really like what's going on to this with the sides here. Um, you might be able to pick it up, you might not. But the sides are sort of getting this interesting, like glazed effect to them. It's like it's looking like some sort of coating has been applied over here that kind of makes it a little bit darker than the rest of it. Uh, it's ca it's more noticeable on this on this side actually, I think. I don't know. I don't I actually do not. Well, actually, yeah, you can kind of see how it just sort of looks like some sort of glaze was put over it. You know, that just sort of formed. It, I actually really like that. And here's the top. As you can see so, yeah. There you go, and here's the insert. Insert actually seems to be holding up quite nicely in terms of uh, scratches and such. So, whatever. That's a very mute point, though. Nobody really cares about that. Anywho, that's, that's that. So, anyways, hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit if you are wondering whether or not you want to get a high-polished chrome or a high-polished brass to be a user. If you are like me and you want to use a uh, a simple plain shiny high polished Zippo uh, as your user <laughs> I don't know um, so yeah hopefully that will have helped you out in terms of knowing what to expect from each finish um, the, you know, the one th I'll, I'll go ahead and t list my observations here that I've noticed from this particular video. I only really have one observation, and that is is that with the high polished chrome when you use it, um, you know the wear that forms on it is sort of random. Like you you might have you mean you probably noticed it when I was showing it. If I can pop it out here, again that is you'll see. random. I mean I was even trying to point this out. Like there's a blotch. Uh, you know, just a really big clump of scratches. I honestly have no idea where that came from. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like, really random. I mean, you can, it's, it is consistent. <clears throat> it is definitely a consistent, you know, wear, I guess. But, you know, like, it, you know, it's sort of even. But it is, it, it's still random. Like, I mean, you can sort of make out each individual scratch. I mean, for the most part, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you know, they are a little bit, you know, pretty distinct, I guess, from each other. But, you know, yeah, like I said, it is random. But, you know, that, I, I actually do really like the way that this thing looks with it being all used like that. Especially since this is actually a 1937 replica. If this were perhaps one of these Zippos that I decided to go ahead and make a user, I don't know. I do not think I'd want to see, you know, this random assortment of scratches on this type of lighter here, like this, like, you know, the just the modern version, I guess, if you will. Uh, if you want to get a high polish chrome Zippo to use, I would highly suggest going with one of the, with a replica, uh, especially in 1937, because they're pretty cheap, and they are, they just look good, in my opinion. So, yeah, and they're actually not all that different from these. They're basically just a different case. Um, that's basically the only difference. I mean, just actually, not even that. It's just a different shape. That's pretty much the only difference. Everything else is identical to a rig, to a more modern day Zippo. Um, but also, I w also was trying to point out here that the, you know, the high polished brass ones when you use them, tend to get worn down very evenly. It's a very consistent 
scratching, you know, like a, you know, yeah. I won't even call it a scratching. I actually think it's tarnish because um, if you take a look at this pamphlet back here, and I'm not going to read it because I've read it many times before, but this pamphlet here will basically tell you that uh, brass is a metal that is known for tarnishing. It, you know, brass just tarnishes. So what Zippo actually did from the factory, you know, and I'm pretty sure this still has it, uh, they put a light coating over the, you know, on over the finish, you know, uh, you know, you know, they basically coated the uh, Zippo's Zippo's casing in a um, a very light coating. I don't know, maybe it's some sort of plastic. I really don't know, but just something so that way it wouldn't actually end up tarnishing while it's in the display case, if you know what I mean, because, you know, brass just tarnishes like that. I mean, take, I mean, if you just look around you, like, in your house, you'll see brass things, and, you know, for the most part, they might look pretty shiny, but if you really get in there and take a look at it, you will see, eh, there's a few marks here and there where it's, you know, just been tarnished and such. Um, so, yeah. Brass is just known for tarnishing, but in my opinion, brass is beautiful when it tarnishes. I actually really like the way it, that it just ends up tarnishing out on itself. It's it's just sort of looks nice, um, and it's it's always kind of fun because you know, if you carry it around for a while, you know, just in your pocket, uh, and especially if you have something out another metal object in there, like I I usually carry my Aluma wallet and my Zippo in my same pocket. When you take it out, it just, you know, the wear and scratches and the tarnish that has formed from it just being in your pocket, you know, every time you pull it out, it just looks better. <laughs> it just looks like, you know, a lot better, in my opinion. So, yeah, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, something else I wanted to point out specifically about these brass lighters, not this one. These are a bad example. Actually, these two right here are actually a really good example of what I want to point out here. Um, something that I've noticed about these brass lighters is that if you take a look at this high-polished chrome, first of all, you'll notice that it does have a canned bottom stamp, which basically means that the bottom stamp was pressed inwards, and as you can see, you get a sort of, um, well, you know, you can see it. the uh, bottom stamping itself is recessed, so it just, it, it makes for a more stir stable, you know, when you stand it up, it, it doesn't wobble around as much, if you know what I mean. I actually do not like how I'm knocking it all around like that. I kind of just realized that. Um, whereas with the uh, the brass ones, for some reason, I, I don't know why. I think Zippo just thinks it looks better. And I guess it does. I guess it matches, you know, pretty good. They actually do not can the bottom, the bottom stamps. So, I mean, it, it's still pretty stable. But as you can see, it does it did wobble there when I set it down. But that there's, that, there's nothing to worry about. You know, you don't need to worry about knocking it over because it does seem to be equally as stable as the others that those do are when it is standing. So, there you go. Just an interesting note. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, that is going to do it. Um, so, thanks for watching, and adios.